Hello Confetti Club, it is Pixie. I am so not ready to film this video. Uh, I tried to film this yesterday, but my camera died halfway through, so we're back at it again. This is the, like, very requested beginning of my anime review series. I didn't think anyone would care about anime reviews from me because I do do, like, a significant amount of beauty and other sort of videos here that don't necessarily require an audience that is interested in Japanese culture and pop culture, obviously. But a lot of you guys wanted anime reviews, so I'm really excited because this is something that I'm so into, holy heck. And I'm starting with probably the most difficult and confusing and terrible choice that I ever could have picked to be my first one to review, and that is Revolutionary Girl Utena or Shoujo Kakume Utena, I think is what it is in Japanese. I never script my videos, none of my videos are scripted. All, I don't think any of them really have like a significant amount of notes. I wrote a page and a half because when I tried to film this yesterday, it was a mess. It was all over the place. You guys, this is the most I think it's called allegorical, where like the whole anime is one big metaphor. So it's incredibly vague and confusing and hard to grasp and metaphorical and a lot of it just doesn't make sense and a lot of questions are just completely left unanswered and it's really dark and scary and I don't know why I watched it. So I'm going to be going through the whole main plot and trying to sum it up as best as I can whilst giving my opinion. That's a review, right? Let's do it. So if you see me glancing down, it's because I have notes, because if I didn't, it'd be bad. So first of all, uh, Revolutionary Girl Lutena is a magical girl anime, or at least it's widely considered one. I've seen it um, sort of treated like a classic around the parts of the internet I've been around, and I would agree with that. It's magical girl-ish, and it's definitely like I'd say it's, I don't know if it's a must watch if you're a diehard Magical Girl fan, but it is like a pillar of classicness. So Revolutionary Girl Utena is about Utena Tenjo who wants to basically become like a prince so she can save princesses. Uh, her parents died when she was eight and she wanted to die so she laid down in a coffin beside her parents coffins but a prince dude showed up and gave her a ring with a rose on it and it's called the rose crest and that ring would lead her back to him one day uh he showed her something eternal which is what it's referred to as through the whole thing um that gave her motivation to live and become like a prince and Utena has been waiting to meet this prince again ever since and this is what we're shown at the beginning of a lot of episodes and it's in this pretty like stained glass type fairy tale like mukashi mukashi um freaking like narrative so we're shown that a lot so that's important that's what happened many many moons ago so it turns out that ring that the prince dude gave her um means that you are a duelist and you have to fight in these sword fights um yeah it turns out that if you're a duelist you have to engage in these weird surreal sword fights on top of this freaky illusion platform with a floating castle on top of it back in the forest behind the school that no one else can go in and every time <laughs> Every time you go up to this platform, they play the same fucking song, and it's so creepy, and it's like, Zetai ume moku shiroku, which means like, absolute destiny apocalypse. Okay, um, it's so creepy, it's so creepy. And so you're fighting in these fights to gain possession of the Rose Bride, who is a person, not an object, throwing that out there. And the Rose Bride is Himemiya Anchi, or Anthe, as we're gonna call her. And after a certain amount of duels, though this isn't really mentioned a lot, um, there's a duel called Revolution or something. And in that duel, whoever has the Rose Bride will gain the power to revolutionize the world, which is never really explained what that is. <laughs> Thanks. And it also turns out that all of the other people who have the Rose Crest are in the student council. 
like what um they have these fancy meetings on their fancy balcony thing and they always have this dramatic intro where they go up an elevator and talk about cracking the egg oh it's funny i'll insert it if i can without getting flagged by b papas motherfuckers it's so confusing it's funny it's just really melodramatic and so all of these members of the student council are receiving letters from end of the world <laughs> Oh, the show is so dumb. And the end of the world, super secret, spooky uh, organization or whatever, is basically sending them letters, giving them orders on duels, who to duel, and information about these duels and what's coming up. And it's a newsletter. Thanks. They don't know who end of the world is. Big mystery. They're just doing whatever the letters say. That's a lot of trust to put in someone you don't know. Utena ends up living with Anthe, the Rose Bride, um, just cause she wins like 99% of the fights in the whole anime. She loses a cup, uh, she loses like once. She loses Anthe once and it's really sad. Um, and Utena doesn't care about the power to revolutionize the world. She just wants to protect Anthe. It's cute. It's kind of a romance. If you watch the, if you're like, hey, I'll check this out, and you watch episode one, the first thing you'll see is the intro, and it's really gay, and it's really cute, but that's, like, the gayest thing in the whole anime. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't get your hopes up. So that kind of ties into her wanting to be, like, a prince, is that she wants to protect Anthe, like a prince, to get the sword, fight, fight, gotta save the rose bride, very nice. Anthe and Utena are living together in this cute little dorm, and Anthe is kind of like her maid just because she's like, in her mind she's programmed to serve because she's like not a real human or whatever is implied, and Utena's just like, chill out, do you want to make friends, let's hang out, it's kind of nice. Um, she also has a little tiny monkey named Choo Choo that looks like her brother, but that's never explained either. They eventually move in, this is skipping forward a lot, they eventually... Um, move in with Akio, who is Anthe's brother. Um, he's also the chairman of the school. <laughs> why is why why is everyone involved with like the supernatural spooky stuff like in the council or the chairman? What's going on? And he has this huge fancy dorm thing. Like it's so surreal. The art is beautiful. It's a beautiful anime. Um, and he seems really nice, but also sexually seduces like a billion girls and like including Utena and he also rapes and or sexually abuses Anthe, his sister, um, which at first was kind of like mysterious. It's like, what are they doing? The, the lights just go out and it's really dramatic and all you will see is like, you'll see like him grab like some sort of arm or something and then it'll go black or you'll just see like her glasses on the table. <laughs> it's so creepy. Um, if you're triggered by incest or sexual abuse or mm, gore, don't watch this show. I'm triggered by those things. I don't know why I watched it. It was bad. He also really likes stars <laughs> and cars. Stars and cars, he has a big planetarium thing in his room. And Utena, like, Utena slash no one really realizes that he's a cock until, like, way later on in the anime. We think he's just a really nice dude, and it turns out he's kind of evil. The show is broken up into four arcs. There's the student council arc, the black rose arc, the Akio Otori arc, who's the dude, and then the, I think it's just called apocalypse arc. I'm not really gonna go through those and explain because we'll be here forever, but basically... We learn about the student council, a um, hundred boys died in a fire and no one knows why and we have to like give people really creepy therapy that makes them corrupt and so they can be our dueling corpses because we want to steal Hime Mia. That one's really confusing and I didn't like it. Basically Akio has a car and he really likes to drive around and then the last one is just everyone is sad and dying. There's also a lot of traditional style Japanese shadow puppetry in the show, which is cool. We get one skit per episode-ish, which I think is before or after one of the title cards. And these skits are always vague and metaphorical and related in some slightly creepy way to whatever is going on in the plot. Um, 
we end up finding out near the end of the show, this is cool, that these shadow puppetry skits were actually put on by two real students in the show. We never see their faces because they're just shadows and it's kind of creepy the way they talk, but they're real students. It's two girls and they're super chill. I really liked finding out that it was a real club because it kind of put my mind to ease because it's like, what's going on? Are they aliens? Is this, you know, malicious? Ah, they're just two girls having fun. <laughs> I like that. Boop, boop, boop. So these girls, near the end-ish of the show, they invite um, Akio, Anthe, and Utena for a private puppet show sort of thing. I don't know if it was private. I think they're just the only people who showed up in this shadow puppet show. We are explained what happened to make Anthe become the Rose Bride and why this whole thing is going on, basically, kinda, sorta, maybe a little bit. It's still confusing. Dios, which is Akio before he was corrupted. Okay, you hear like throughout the first two or three arcs whenever Utena summons the sword out of Anthe, the sword comes out of her mm, chest breast. Um, she says, power of Dios, lend me your power of Dios. Dios is like this nice prince who is sleeping eternally. We find out Dios is the dude who visited Utena. That's the prince. That was Akio before he became evil, which wasn't really explained why he became evil either. So Dios was like sick and dying on this mm, bale of hay in a mm, cottage and the village is pissed. The village is outraged. They are, there's like this mob of people outside this cottage in which Dios is dying and Anthe is trying to help him and they're saying, help my daughter, you know, you gotta, like my daughter needs a prince, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. They're all demanding him and Anthe can't do anything and Akio, not Akio, Dios is dying or something. So Anthe essentially sacrifices herself and she walks out of the cottage and she like puts on this evil face even though she's not evil and she says like Dios is mine. I am claiming possession of this prince. He is mine. No one else can have him. So then this instead of the village being pissed at Dios for not helping all their daughters. <laughs> like, that's not his job. Anyway, the hate gets redirected towards Anthe, which sort of puts a curse on her, I guess, which is why she's the Rose Bride, because the hate from the village is shown, <laughs> this is so hard to describe, via millions and millions of eternal swords of human hatred that are being stabbed into her body in this sort of parallel universe space. I'll show a picture or a video or something to kind of explain. So basically, Anthe sacrificed herself for her brother so that he wouldn't be faced with all this hatred and now she's being stabbed by everyone's hate swords forever and ever. And that makes her the Rose Bride, I guess? Like, it wasn't really explained. And somehow, even though she did that for Dios, Dios, I guess, dies? Because he is, like, sleeping forever. We're shown him sometimes within the big freaky illusion castle. He's, like, sleeping in a ball or something. I, d I don't even know how that- what? Why does he not wake up when she does that for him? Anyway, he becomes Akio, who's evil, I guess, kinda, or at least malicious. And with that story, we then find out what actually happened. Hi, Nina. Hi, Meower. We end up actually finding out what happened the day that Utena was found by the prince. Holy heck. Because we've been told throughout this whole show, like, he showed her something eternal, eternal, something eternal, and we're never told what that is until heck and now. So, she was visited by Dios. Now we know it's Dios, the prince, who was Akio before he turned evil. We've been over that. The something eternal that was shown to Utena was Anthe being stabbed by millions of swords that represent human hatred. It's kind of graphic and not very nice. <laughs> That's what I wrote in my notes. The only thing that could save Anthe from this fate, destiny, whatever, was a prince she could believe in. And that is why Utena wanted to become like a prince to save her, the princess. It feels good saying this because it makes it sound like it makes more sense because in the anime, it is not laid out this clear. 
and it doesn't even sound clear because it doesn't make any sense. Okay, so that we find out at the end of the friggin' anime while, like, we already have been confused for so long. So that explains what actually happened after, because, like, we're shown that little, um, sort of stained glassy fairy tale, like, Mukashi Mukashi long ago, this prince, blah, 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 thing about Utena's story in the first, like, arc and a bit, and then it goes away, and then in the end, they start playing it again before a couple of episodes. So you get a refresher, and then it turns out, oh shit, that was kind of a lie. It was actually hate swords that made her want to become a prince. So now I'm gonna skip forward to the ending. So if so far you haven't been totally spoiled, then nah, it's gonna, this is the ending, which is fucked up, if you couldn't guess that. Utena eventually remembers what she saw that day, because Utena has just been thinking, I want to be a prince, and she didn't totally remember why and she starts getting flashbacks and eventually she's like oh shit i remember the hate swords oh man anthony needs me and so this is around the same time of the duel called the revolution <laughs> but, um and so she wins that final duel gains the power to revolutionize the world and she goes to meet akio and anthony in this weird there it's always in a weird place that doesn't make sense or like has walls um, and she meets them to go get the power to revolutionize the world, I guess. We find out Akio is end of the world. Evil brother sex dude has been sending these people these letters. Now we know. And also the student council has been finding out gradually as Akio takes the Meech in his fancy car to drive through this weird night <laughs> place and then jumps on the car hood and like grins and there's jazz music anyway. Yeah, so I guess it kind of makes sense that Akio is end of the world and that's the reason that he's been sending the student council letters because he wants Anthe to remain under his control so he's been saying duel this person duel that person this will come up soon it will be the day for revolution or whatever Akio was also saying like make sure that she's as far away from Utena Tenjo as possible like I don't want her to be in blah 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 because Akio wants to keep being a sick twist of fuck and he doesn't want anyone to get Anthe. And he wants the power to revolutionize the world, which is still never explained. We also never find out why Dios is still sleeping and why he never wakes up. Moving on. Utena meets Akio and Anthe. They have a final duel. Hi. What? What? Hi. Do you have something to say? Do you have something to say? I love you. <laughs> She's not okay with that. So they have their final duel thing, and it's like Utena versus Akio, I guess? I'm. Forgive me if I'm remembering this wrong. And I have cat hair on my face now. Anthe ends up stabbing Utena in the back, literally in the back. And I can, the only way I can fathom understanding this is that Akio was controlling her. I refuse to believe that Anthe was actually evil and hated Utena. Like that's not gonna, not gonna fly with me. And that would be because Utena would have won the power to revolutionize the world and she'd gotten that far so Akio's like, shit the only thing we can do now is kill her so she doesn't get that because I want it. <laughs> what? And also because Akio wants Anthe to remain eternally stabbed by the hate swords and also remain as his weird incestuous sex slave. I don't know. So Tana's dying. She's been stabbed. Blood. Gush gush. Anthe's getting stabbed forever. You can see her suspended in her thing with all the swords going into her. It's really not pretty. Um, actually, it's kind of pretty, but like not in a flower way, in a like nicely animated but gross way. And Akio is just like content, and Akio's trying to open this door, which I guess behind the door lies the power to revolutionize the world, we think. But okay, Akio gives up, and Utena ends up making her way over, even though she's been stabbed and she's literally dying, she makes her way over to this door, ends up opening it with like she cries on her ring or something i don't know behind the door lies anthe basically in a coffin kind of like utena was 
and I think that's her like real self. <laughs> so Anthony's like curled up in this coffin and she's like, what? No, don't do it. And Utena was like, grab my hand. And she was like, no. And she didn't grab her fucking hand in time. So opening the door saved Anthony, basically. But when opening that coffin door and saving Anthony, the swords redirected to Utena. <laughs> so now Anthe is fine. Utena is the one now being eternally stabbed with hate swords. And that's basically it. The anime ends with Anthe being a normal person. And she wears a really cute beret, by the way. She has like longish hair and a cute little style. <laughs> and Utena is forgotten unseen, disappeared, gone. We can only imagine that she's out there somewhere living like the Rose Bride, I guess. It ends with Anthony telling Akio she is leaving, she is moving, she's no longer under his control. So she gets on a train and she basically says, I'm going to go find Utena. And the episode, the very last episode is called Someday Shine Together. So Anthony's gonna go find Utena and save her like she saved Anthe and she's gonna be the prince this time and I don't know how it's gonna end because basically whenever Utena did everything she could to save Anthe she ended up dying so are they just gonna take turns being stabbed forever? What's going on? Hmm. This anime was good. It was not my usual, <laughs> not my usual style if you can imagine. I usually go for more like Kira Kira, Maho Shoujo, cute stuff, and this was definitely not that. It was good. I sort of wish I didn't watch it because it was upsetting and just creepy, and I'm probably gonna keep having weird Utena related nightmares until I'm like 45 years old. I just get really affected by this sort of stuff. Some people can watch horror and gore, and they're just like, whatever, but like, I see the even most vaguely spooky thing and I have nightmares for like years so <laughs> the more you know about me the ending wasn't as bad as I expected because I had been looking on the there's a new Tenet explained tumblr that's just trying to make sense of whatever the hell happened in the show and I'd been looking at it as I'd been watching the anime um to try and make sense of whatever I'd previously watched because it's um it's categorized into sections and there was a whole section just called the ending so I was like shit what goes down it must just end more confusingly but at least we sort of get an answer for what happens kinda on some things I am happy that Anthe is now free and happy that's good I I haven't watched the movie by the way so please don't spoil the movie um apparently <laughs> apparently the movie is either a retelling or a continuation based on how you <laughs> choose to see it so that's even more confusing but yeah I give this anime oh I should give it a rating I'm gonna I'm gonna try and keep the same sort of format with all of my anime reviews so I'll give it a rating out of 10 and I give revolutionary girl Utena I give it eight hate swords out of 10 I think because I, I definitely appreciate what they did. It is definitely a masterpiece work of art. Which you can't say for a number of animes. A lot of animes are just there to watch on TV, to enjoy. But this one is definitely, it has a message it wants to tell. It wants to make people think. It wants to confuse you and make you, you know, question things. And I really appreciate that. It's kind of like the Banksy edgelord of animes, but I did really enjoy it. I do appreciate what they were doing. Do I recommend this? That depends. Um, no, I wouldn't recommend it unless you're the type who already watches these sorts of animes. I don't. <laughs> I kind of wish I didn't watch it because it bothered me a lot, but that's just because it's me. I'm not blaming the show. I'm just saying for me personally, maybe I could have watched another season of Pretty Cure instead, but I saw it. <laughs> Here's my opinion. If you care, there it is. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you've seen Revolutionary Girl Utena. If you haven't, this video made zero sense. Let me know if you have any other theories about the show. I would love to know because, oh my god, it's confusing. The only comfort I can grasp 
for in looking for answers is other people's theories because there is no real concrete answer for most of this. I love you guys very much and I will see you in the next video which is not this one because this one is over. Bye!